Good morning team, how are we? Today is D-Day, it's engine back together day. Uh, I'm just doing some prep work, I think I'm pretty much there really. Let's just run through what we've got there. We've obviously got, got the engine assembly there, block assembly with the pistons in it. We've got the head, we've got the barrels, we've got the rocker cover, we've got the stator side plate, we've got the cover plate for the stator, we've got the cam chain tensioner, we've got the cam chain over there, we've got the new head bolts and washers. I've uh, got my trusty oil I can, a few tools, bits and pieces, some copper slip grease, uh, got some normal grease, uh, the engine bolts for this case in here. I've uh, got my brew, more importantly, and a couple of spanners, 10 and 12 mil. And the all important chain link. I haven't forgotten that little ball bearing look, which goes inside there. So, yeah, don't panic. All is in hand. Uh, yeah, got my tripod set up. There we go. So I'll be filming from this angle there. So, um, yeah, hopefully it'll go okay. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any real hiccups. Everything's really prepped, isn't it? Everything's meticulously clean. Absolutely spotless. But I will go over it again with one of my super duper wipes in a minute just to make sure literally everything is as it should be. Uh, everything's greased that needs to be greased uh, and all the rest of it. I've even written down, I did a, I did a scale drawing, look. See the similarity? I've written down the length of each screw which goes into, into into which hole because I like doing that kind of thing. The thing is, when you're sort of five mil out with a bolt, that's five mil less thread in there, and it's not has got so much purchase on on uh, that part of the panel, has it? So there we go. I like to do things by numbers. Uh, oh yeah, gasket kit. I have done a dry run with the gaskets, believe it or not, because um, the uh, which one was it? the oil filter uh, clutch gasket wasn't quite right was it but I've checked the rest and they are okay so I'm okay with that I'm gonna use these two seals here there's the old two which goes around go around the dowels uh, well not specifically that one I must read the book in a second just to just to firm up um, whereabouts those two seals go I think I'm right in saying that's the rear of the barrels I'm thinking right in saying they go around these two uh, dowels there and just to confirm my my theories if we pop that gasket on there like so and marry that up like thus you have no you don't wrong one on the other side of the head that's better stupid boy look at the size of that hole around that dowel and the same that side so that's where those two seals go but I'm just going to read the book just to, just to check up on myself, make sure I get it all right, because those, those those sort of seals are imperative, aren't they? Right, okay, well, wish me luck. I'm going in. Okay, first things first, I've reintroduced the stator into the stator housing. Uh, I've cleaned all this up. I might take those connectors out of those plugs actually and clean them up properly when they're also all on the engine. You stick a terminal, very fine screwdriver in there, push a little tab in and the and the cable comes out of out of the, the, the socket there. You can give it a good clean. I've actually got some cleaning fluid you can you dip terminals in. I think it's watch cleaning fluid and it eats away all the all the nastiness and just leaves leaves the copper there there we go so I've reinstated that the grommets pushed back into the slot there next thing to do is to apply a little dab of grease with a cotton bud or uh, a q-tip for my American friends uh, pop that in there and then slide a little ball bearing down into there and make sure that the it's in there as I slide it back on and then back onto this shaft there because that's where it presses against to push the clutch in on the other side of the engine right okay I think that's about it I've got some this wiring goes back in that cable there plugs back in back into there to the pickup that little that little bit there that where my fingertip is and then uh, gets clamped underneath that little bracket there I've got to just undo that screw and the wire the cable goes under there and then comes out there 
So that's it. So I will just fix that back on using my chart with the right length screws which are in there. Okay, I'm excited. Right, gasket is in place, ball bearing is in greased hole, and I've also opened up this clutch actuator and I've greased inside there. It's tricky to see, isn't it, in this sunlight? So it's all greased uh, round inside that. that uh, what do you want to call it there? That shaft, so that's all nice and lube. There's a ball bearing in there, all happy and covered in grease. Right, let's get the side panel back on. Right, it's all going fairly well. The, all the holes lined up on the gasket, which, which was nice. Uh, right, this data wire cable goes in there, like so, and this little clamp clamps it back against so it doesn't snag on the front sprocket there. Now what I'm going to do, there's a slight crack in the plastic behind this rubber sleeve and that little rubber sleeve sort of fits in that groove just where my finger is there. So what I'm going to do is just going to give it a little bit of a little bit of assistance with a bit of black insulation tape. Just going to lock that onto there because this just wants to keep shoot, shooting out off the cable. So I'm just going to do that. It's a little bit of extra protection isn't it? Um, for future future use. Right, okay, let's uh, let's get on and do some more bits. Right, let's get on with the nitty gritty, shall we? Um, oh, incidentally, I went to a fetish restaurant last night. A fetish restaurant, I hear you cry. Yeah, a fetish restaurant. I got towed in the hole. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, <laughs> uh, here's another one you won't know. <laughs> you won't get even. Right, just unpacking around these pistons, making sure nothing is going in to the engine, any grit or grime, because uh, stuff does does pick up on your rags, doesn't it? There we go. <laughs> right now you've stopped laughing at that last joke. Uh, just checking the piston rings. There are three. There are two. There are two compression rings, and one oil scraper ring at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set them at ten to ten past and half past. Don't have them lined up. So here we go. Top ring. Let's slide them around to ten to the second ring. Where is it? Oh God, it's going to be right around there, isn't it? On your little sausage. Right. Top ring ten two. Second ring ten past. Oil scraper ring. Where's the back of it? There it is. That's now at the back. So that's good. So that's ready to accept the head, uh, the barrels even. Let's do the same with this one. Keep it uniform, don't we really? Okay, where is it? There it is. Slide that one around to the 10 2 position. The second ring down in the 10 pass position. Now I'm not overly happy with that top ring, it seems to be a bit, a bit stuck. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, there we go, and the bottom ring is now in the half pass position. Yeah, I'm just going to lube up this top ring because it's a little bit on the sticky side. You don't want a sticky ring, do you? <laughs> so, uh, sorry, I'll I'll, uh, I'll grow up in a minute. Right, so ten to ten pass. Excuse me, quality control technician. Trying to do some serious work here. Right, that's that. They're all set. I am now going to put this base gasket in place, uh, give everything a bit of a clean out, and I'm actually going to thread through the cam chain as well before I get too into getting the block on there. Okay, right, well, we'll pause it there and we'll carry on in a sec. Right, now I've got my rings set up in the correct position, and they're all lovely and free, which is nice. 10 to, 10 past, half past. Can't go wrong really, can we? OK. 
Okay, I'm just going to give them a bit of a bit of a mop, just to make sure they're 100% clean. What a beautiful day for it, isn't it? God, absolutely fantastic. I'll be putting lots of lots of oil around this before I slide my head down onto the piston. Right, gasket's now in place. That's good. There are two dowels on the bottom of the block which go in the front two holes. Um, I've lubed already, I've already lubed the, the, the cylinder bores. They're all oiled up, ready to go. I've cleaned down inside there. I'm just going to thread this cam chain through now where it should be. With the aid of my long nose pliers, I will pop that down in there. Thus, so, along those pliers, grab hold of, and just gently feed the cam chain down in, so there's equal lengths at the top here. Okay, let's get it on the, do you know what, that's not bad at all, is it, that? Out there, is that good? No, nope. one tooth out. There, that's exact. Okay, so I'm going to leave that hanging over the front and rear of the engine, ready to thread up through the head once I get it down so far and just get the pistons, the rings inside the bores. I will then thread this up through and do the same on top of the barrels, leave that front and rear hanging over. That's okay, I've just spotted a little bit of debris in there, that's no good. One of my pubes, I think. Oh, I mean, one of my hairs, actually. Right, okay, so that's that. That's ready, cam chains in. Next thing we need to do is to pop on the tensioner assembly, like so. Well, that goes, let's give it a bit of a clean. Don't want any little particles of grit or sand or anything on there, do we? Not really. That needs to be done. And another thing before I slide the barrels down onto the pistons, I'm going to generally lube up. Oh, for sake. I'm going to lube up the big ends on the crankshaft, just down in there, quite liberally. Just give it a good dousing. Make sure that's all thoroughly soaked in there. Right. So that sits down. there like so well, I reckon that the cam chain has to be inside there I'm just going to pause it there for a second just double check in the old Bible make sure the cam chain is sitting in the right place there's no point in ramming it all back together and, and it being in the wrong place does it it has to come through there actually I can see it when I put there I'm just going to pause it there otherwise it'd be a half an hour job won't it right let's uh, sort this out Okay, so we're at this situation now. I've got the cam chain in. It goes in the side next to the big wheel in the middle and then fold them out either side. Uh, right, what I've done is I have completely and utterly lubed both of these pistons. There are two holes at the front of a piston and there is a tiny little hole at the back of the piston. I'll take a photograph in a sec. Uh, I've literally put my, my nozzle on the piston and I've squirted some lube in there. Uh, until it falls down inside the piston and down onto the crank there. Done that with all the six holes, so beautiful. And I've gone around the circumference of each piston with me very clean finger, uh, wiping my, smearing my lube all, all around. Stop it. <clears throat> right, okay. Okay, so now we're pretty much ready for the head assembly, aren't we? For the block. Uh, the gasket, unfortunately, I dropped a couple of droplets of oil onto the gasket, I've cleaned it up as best I can, I hope it doesn't affect it. Right, so let's get, make sure both the dowels are in place on the front of the barrels, 
and we'll just line that up with the studs and slide that down very gently like so okay and then we'll move the pistons gently 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 into the bore take as much time as you physically need for this now there's no need apparently says the book for, for spring compressor for ring compressors because the bottom of the barrel there is a 45 degree chamfer inside so it should as you push that down onto the pistons it should gently offer in the piston into the barrels uh, right so we're there next thing let's get the cam chain in up and through there I'm just going to put my finger on there so it doesn't lose my place that's one to again when the barrels are slid down into position I can jiggle that, ca that uh, cam chain around again just to get both ends equal at the top here so it meets on top of the camshaft equally where that zero is I've got the timing set on T on the side there again I'll take a photograph of that in a bit uh, right well I pause it there I'll take a picture of me little tiny holes Right, I've just taken a couple of photos, you would have just seen them already. So now you've got to gently, gingerly slide that down over the pistons. No force required really, it's just literally a bit of a jiggle. He says, I've never actually worked on one of these engines before, but uh, so I bet it's going to be a complete and utter pig, isn't it? So easy to damage rings. <clears throat> Doesn't help with me, uh, the crankshaft keep moving about a bit. Let me keep that on there. I'm also jiggling that. Position. Um, sugar. <coughs> There's probably a clamp somewhere on the market you can do. You can use. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put that on there and wang a screw in there to keep that in place. Up here for thinking, down there for dancing. Right, the top two rings are in. It's just this uh, oil scraper ring now to jiggle in without breaking anything. No, that's not going anywhere fast. Let's try working on the other side at the same time. Do it being an octopus, really, can not you? Right, danger, danger. <clears throat> High voltage. When we touch, when we kiss. Hello, I'll have YouTube on my case. Stop playing music. Jiggle on each side, and what you'll find is that it'll go all of a sudden. To me, to you, to me. Uh, 
like a bit of lube in there. It's not going to hurt, is it? And there we go. Let's drop the barrels down very, very carefully into the recess. Make sure the gasket's good, make sure the dowels line up. Slide it down. Like so. Shouldn't really need to force anything there. Oh, that's why it wasn't going down. There we go. The back of the cam chain tensioner was the wheel I caught on the back of here. Right, here we go. She's in place. Just double check that cam chain. Bring it up onto the... One tooth out. One tooth out. There, that's pretty much it. Okay, right, that's barrel on, uh, pistons nicely seated in there. I'm going to take my little helpful screw out and just make sure the pistons move oh, beautifully. Let me just bring you down so you can get a closer look. Right, there we go. Give it a little bit of a turn on the spanner. Look at that, let's go back the other way. Just to draw them down a bit. Beautiful. Let's go up again. And back down. Here we go. So, I'm going to pop this back bolt in now, which is there. Let's do that whilst we're chin wagging. Where's my hand? There it is. Oh, I'll get that in a sec. And that's pretty much it for that, isn't it, really? Make sure these seals are nicely seated, these two new rubber O-rings, because they actually seal. That is an oil way, that is an oil way. If they're not in place, you're going to get leakage, aren't you? And I think it's just dowels on these front two. Okay, right, well, uh, just going to turn off for a sec and just get myself sorted out. Uh, quick smoke and then crack on. Right, I've had a little bit of a tidy round. Uh, everything's all hunky-dory, not a problem. Uh, incidentally, the two 10mm screw bolts that hold the cam chain tensioner assembly in there doesn't state in the old Bible about any torque settings, so I've just given it a bit of spannerage. You know, uh, you, you get a feel for this kind of thing. You don't want to give it great big beans in case you strip it out. It's only, it's only alloy thread, isn't it, at the end of the day? So yeah, they're in their type. Um, and again, the back one, this little lock, 10mm at the back, which holds the barrels down. Uh, again, no real torque settings. There are torque settings, obviously, for the nice new shiny chrome nuts. Go on the top, that's between uh, 11 and 14 foot pounds. And I'm going to use my oldy fashioned uh, torque wrench. It's got on there foot pounds straight away, so I can't go wrong there, can I? Uh, I love this old thing. I've got a modern one where you dial in the numbers, but I still prefer my old Draper. There we go, that's the only thing I do prefer about Draper, to be honest. Uh, right, before I get too carried away with popping that head on, this is the cam chain tensioner. It's spring-loaded, so it keeps a balance on that rocker system, which is the cam chain tensioner. Uh, now, before I put the head on, this has to be bolted up. It goes in this hole here. Okay, that goes in there and if you look at it it's offset you see the shaft is on the right hand side well when you put it in the head i'm pretty sure i'm saying that the shaft has to go towards the exhaust pipes if you see what i mean there so that goes up in that hole there uh, like so and you undo that bolt there can you see that and then you push that right up in as far as it will go and just nip it up you nip that bolt back up so that thing is sort of bolted in there uh, squarely like so not like that or that but squarely and then you sit the head back down pull, pull the chain up through these two gaps either side of this camshaft 
uh, put the split pin on there okay and then you can release this bolt and the, the plunger will be spring loaded back down onto that rocker assembly and it will hopefully take up that tension right that's the intention of that I'm just going to pause it for a second there whilst I fanny around with this okay right well as I said the the cam chain tensioner itself is it's got a keyway on it can you see that keyway that flat edge there well that's the edge that that bolt bites onto so it can only go in one way round which is with the with the shaft facing towards the exhaust ports now it's imperative that this slides up and down as free as you like I've just tried mine in my hole and it was quite gritty so I've got the old lube out and I've given that I've given my hole a darn good squirting just to sit it in there there we go and that's free you must make sure that is not scratchy that is still a little bit scratchy I'm going to investigate that a bit further you don't want any grit in there whatsoever because if that cam chain tensioner snags on a bit of grit there's no tension on the cam chain and uh, all sorts of nasty things could happen couldn't it so there we go actually it's not too bad now let me put a bit of oil in the hole Get it safe. there give me shaft a bit of an oil let's just clean it off again suit you sir right lovely oh that's better so now that's in there I will just nip up I pushed it all the way home there it sits down as far as it will go I'm just gonna nip that little 8 mil bolt up typical just nip it up tiny amount so that's in situ that's not going to fall down into that engine when you upend it and slide it down on your eight shafts okay studs oh, stop it right okay uh, well let's just get on with it shall I what I've done is also I have bought that front cam chain away from there I brought it over to the rear because that cam chain tensioner shoe fits down on the shoe inside there at the front okay so with the chain being over there it would have been in the way wouldn't it just a bit of common sense it's something I've just sort of stood back and had a look at sometimes it's best just to take your time just have a look at it stop have a bit of a brew have a think about it look at the situation make sure everything's 100% um, just run it around in your head check the check the old diary if you want to I've honestly been just checking that for, for talk settings and things um, Pretty much okay well it's ready to go isn't it really right, let's, should we just crack on I'm gonna sit that gasket pretty much where it needs to be straight away I'm gonna pop a little bit of lube down there on that cam chain tensioner shoe that this butts up against let's put a little, little daub on the oil everything just oil everything but try not to get any on your gaskets like what I did in it. Right, that's nice. Yeah, squirt it all in there, get it all in there. Lovely jubbly. Okay, right, let's uh I've got my two dowels on the back with the O-rings on there, not forgetting them, most important. I've got my two dowels on the front, I've got my cam chain tensioner locked in. Just gonna slide it down a bit then. Like so. I'm just gonna thinking ahead when I slide this head down I don't want it to fall all the way down I want it to stop at a certain height so I can then thread the cam chain through the two holes either side of the camshaft so I am literally gonna get something like my insulation tape and sit it in there like that right let's have a go Okay, stand nicely. Sits there. That's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. That roll of insulation tape. I might paint that idea actually. Thank you for your quid, won't I? Not. Right. So this is the front cam chain. 
let's pop that up to the front of the camshaft like so there I'm just gonna wrap that around there just so it doesn't fall back in and here's the rear cam chain I'm gonna thread that up through to the rear of the camshaft uh, drive cog there we go that's that now I can literally I'm just going to wind that round the, uh, the carburetor studs so that's there it's not going to fall back in the engine I can literally now remove no I can't because I've put the bloody wires around haven't I right okay so now we can lift it up slightly remove the insulation tape and literally slide that down making sure that gasket's in the right place it can't, it can't wait to get on can it there we go absolutely beautiful absolutely right let's have a go with this cam chain but I know now that it's not around the cog at the bottom because it's all loose and floppy. She cried. Let's go back a tooth. That's about right now, the camshaft. Got to get the big zero right at the top. It's 12 o'clock, let's eye it through. That is exactly 12 o'clock. And more importantly, well, this is miles out, so I'm going to loosen off this cam chain. Just going to let it drop into the engine a little bit whilst I get the T lined up with the mark. Again, I'm going to use my super duper bolt in one of the holes on the sprocket on the uh, stator there. I'm going to pop that in there. Like so. It's still a little bit out. I need to put something in there. That's the right thickness. I should just wind that screw in. So the head of the screw is in line. I can, I can leave that like that. Whilst I'm doing this. Just wind that bolt in, like so, and the head of the bolt, resting on that spanner, is literally exactly on that T. I say literally, it's not 100%, so I'm going to put something else in there. There, that's exactly on the T for top dead centre. So now I need to get that O in place. Let me just double check it. That's exactly 12 o'clock midday on there. Now I need to marry up the two ends of the chain on top of the cam chain sprocket. tooth out so what's going on I am a tooth out uh, not a tooth out I've got one bit of gap there so what's going on ah that can't be on the cam shaft uh, crank shaft that's better that's on the crank shaft and now they marry up beautifully, absolutely beautifully. I'm just going to double check that. That is beautiful. Right, I'm just going to pause it there whilst I remove these two yellow cables. Right, I'm just going to bring you in a little bit closer. My, my Heath Robinson set up here, but the most important thing is that that T is directly in line with that mark 
on the state of housing and just have a look round at the camshaft there's the camshaft where's my little pointer oh my pointer's there I better not take that off but can you see there that O that is exactly at 12 o'clock and there the two ends of the chain which are round the crankshaft under there back up they're both in situ so let's pop in the split link very carefully you could again pad around there so you don't drop anything in the engine you watch me drop this in the engine nope I'm in luck there you go that's that side in so there we go that's that on there now I am going to put a bit of padding in there because I know me so if that drops down into the engine one of these two little pieces guess what you've got to start all over again haven't you <laughs> right let's pop that in there let's pop that in around there and uh, one for luck around the back there okay now let's pop this little eyelet ring on there okay now the engine when it's running is rotating counterclockwise so therefore you put the shoe on with the the u-bend facing forwards okay it doesn't matter which way you put this link in whether you put it in from that side or this side, it doesn't really matter as long as that shoe is facing in the forward exhaust front of the engine type way so you literally pop that where are we? Pop that over there, like so, and then line it up. And then to finish off, you get your screwdriver, your flat bladed screwdriver, and you just move it right and click that in, and it should lock in. I can't do that whilst holding the camera. But there we go. So, yeah, Heath Robinson, all kind of works, doesn't it? The timing line is marked up on there. So the timing is now set for that engine. I will rotate it through a good couple of 360 degrees make sure none of the valves are catching with any of the pistons make sure i'm not 180 degrees out etc etc so we're going on from there okay right um yeah let's get that clip in and uh, and carry on right there we go we have the clip locked in there facing the right way the front of the engine uh what well, next basically i want to put the rocker cover on obviously gasket first and uh, secure that bolt in there so you can't get it the wrong way around it only go on one way let's just shift it through a couple of revolutions going counterclockwise at all oh hang on before i do that i don't want to disturb any of that really i need to unlock this locked cam chain tensioner don't i let's not get ahead of myself there there so that now should have popped down and be tensioning the cam chain let me just oh oh yeah that's lovely that's spot on so i'm just going to literally nip that up a little bit turn the engine around a few times and then nip that up even further right so let's go counterclockwise oh nice compression Oh bugger, I've got my spark plugs in. Let me just whip them out. I don't want the spark plugs in when I'm turning the engine around, do I? Not really. Why is that, you cry? Well, because where the valves are all seated nice and properly now, and it's all gas tight, almost, you will build up compression, and it will be harder to turn the engine over. With the spark plugs out, there's no compression, because there's a great big hole there for the air to escape as the pistons go up and down. Right, let's do... Oh, I keep on doing that wrong, don't I? Counterclockwise. What I'm going to do first, whilst I'm doing that, is just pop a bit more lube in. Those little holes on the rockers. I'm going to lube the cam lobes. Where There's the cam lobe there. There's the rocker system. I'm just lubing all that. So as it's going around, it's not dry. Plenty of lube on there. Doesn't matter, you're going to fill the crank up with all in a bit anyway. 
Let's give the chain a good, a good lube in. Let's give it another turn or two. There we go. Well, you can hear those springs just finding their own seat now on the valves. That's all good. That's lovely. There's no horrible grindy noises or anything catching. Right, I'm just going to stop it there. Re lube these lobes. Thus, a bit more oil on the chain there. Get that soaked. There we go. Nice, nice liberal amounts of oil. I hope I got the sump plug in, eh? <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Right, let's get that round to the T again. It'll probably scoot past it. Oh no, there we go, a bit more. It's not quite on the T, and it's uh, not quite. Anyway, how are the rockers? They're quite, quite nice. I have to do the valve, the the valve gaps in a bit when I. And when you've got it right, one side will be tight, one side should be loose, and you rotate it under, I think it's under an 80, well, not even looking in the book, and then one tight side goes tight and the other side goes loose, and then you adjust it then with your feeler gauges. We'll go through feeler gauges stuff in a, in a bit, but that's pretty much it, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. They went fairly well, didn't it, to be honest? Um, I want to get... I can now put this timing, this stator cover back on because that's all timed up. No, I can't. I need to leave it off to do the valve. Sorry, forget that. So I need to get that round to the right point on that marker to do the valves properly. Okay, well, that's about it. A bit painless, wasn't it? A little bit iffy when you're putting the pistons into the into the, 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 the bores. Um, obviously, that the 45 degree chamfer as you push the piston in, sort of squeezes the rings to where they should be and it's very easy to, to crack a ring if they're pretty much jutting out. So I had to, literally on this left hand side, so you saw me fanning around there because the lower oil scraper ring was set out and it was just going down out of its groove. So I had to literally, thin screwdriver, just gently ginger, pop it back in its own slot, squeeze it in a bit, pop the whole thing slid down. Uh, right, well that went pretty well. Okay, I'm going to put the top back on and I will give it 13 pounds foot torque, I think, and go from there. Right, cheers. Right, as I'm rotating, just as a side note, when the camshaft is going round, do you remember when I was... I had the camshaft in the parts cleaner. There's those four little holes, aren't there? Uh, this end, the smaller, which, which means the oil has to tra travel to the other side as well as just this side, and those holes are bigger. What I'm doing is I'm literally putting the oil can on there and I'm injecting oil into that shaft. So when you start the engine for the first time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick the engine over a good few times with the, um, the spark plugs not in firing capability so I can get that oil in the into the oil pump because at the moment it's bone dry, there's air in there so you need to get the oil fill up, filled up just to the correct height, depth, width, whatever, level, uh, kick it over a few times, get that oil pump, pumping that oil around the engine. Take as long as you want doing that, you do not want to get the engine fired up with any dry joints anywhere in there. Okay, it's imperative isn't it, it's just for the longevity of the engine. I love my little oil can, it's great, isn't it? Right, there we go. Lovely. 
beautiful. It feels really good. I literally drenched the big ends in oil as well before I put anything on there. Right. Uh, I think it's time I put the head on and clamp that down, don't you, before I go any further. Let's get that so all the lobes are free. Loose, 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 loose. That's on the T. That's on the zero. What a bit of luck. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's not waste any time, eh? Make sure there's no bits hanging off of that gasket there. Yeah, it can only go on one way. It's not the best gasket kit in the world, I've got to say. And one of you guys did say throw it in the bin and get the right thing. But it's, it's kind of done it all right so far, hasn't it? There was only that one gasket that was pretty rotten. Holes are very, very tight to the 8mm studs. You could do a bin half a mil larger. Right, that's down on there. That looks good. That looks pretty good. Right, let's get the cover on. Make sure it's clean. You don't want anything falling into the engine, do you, at this time? seven washers I've gone for new they're a little bit expensive uh, but there we go I bought eight I'm gonna do all eight to start with the coil sits on this front second in left stud but as it is at the moment I'm still toying with the idea of electronic ignition which will do away with the coil I think and quote me on that. Nice new nuts, just to give it that finishing bling, doesn't it? And you know that they've not been torqued down before, so that's good. Incidentally, I have three tiny little O-rings left. Thus, they go on the three bolts that hold this stator cover on. Okay, there's the two old original blue rubber seals that went on those dowels on the back there that's pretty much it I've got, got the exhaust the, the, the carburetor block and the two gaskets to go on one either side which sits on the back two studs on there that's to go I've got the points cover gasket to go back on there and like I said there is the stator cover gasket Ooh, I've got itchy doobries and there are the two exhaust gaskets which go in there they're uh, compressible aren't they those ones um, sometimes if it's a little if they keep falling out and it's a real pain in the ass another top tip is to get yourself a little bit of Vaseline for goodness sake stop it a little bit of Vaseline just on the back of that gasket there and stick it in there okay it will smoke a little bit for five minutes when you start the engine but it will hold it in there and you don't need to be an octopus to hold everything in one place so there we go a little top tip for you there okay well that's about it I'm gonna talk this down to 13 foot-pounds in a bit right that's about it thank you for watching I hope that's uh, covered most things um, I will do the valve timing uh, in a little while the gaps sorry in a little while basically get the feet in the gauge feeler gauges like so and this is point zero 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 two apparently you can do three uh, what's my smallest point zero zero four on that one and what have I got on this one I 
the hell does that say? Don't know. This one's really hard to read. <laughs> it's been in the bottom of my toolbox for many years. It's going to go back in the skip, I think. That's got 0004 on it as well. Okie cokey. Right, well, I'll do that in a bit. Basically, take the cover off. You undo the 10mm lock nut. I have, I'll, I'll do a little video on that because I have the correct toolage, little squared tool to do that. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, I'm pleased that's gone back together well. It's all well lubed, isn't it? Now, nice. We'll get the cover back on, talk the head top nuts down. I've got to nip this uh, bolt back up in a sec, this 8mm on the front there for the cam chain tensioner. And that's pretty much it. Must um, I've got holes blocked up at the moment with paper. Don't forget to take your paper out, your tissue out of there before you stick your exhaust pipes on and things like that and the carburetor side. You don't want that in there really do you? Nothing's going to happen otherwise. Right, thank you for watching. I hope that was uh, informative in some sort of way and not too techy. Okay, thanks again guys. Do appreciate your comments. And uh, right, take it easy. Stuff it. Let's talk them down now, shall we? 12 mil. You do it corner diagonally. Okay, so I've done one, two, three, four, like so. Well, I've not talked them up yet. I've just got them to nipping point. Okay. There we go. And this torque wrench is so simple to use. It's so basic. Basically, it's a lever, and when you start giving a bit of torque on it, the, the needle corresponds with the dial there, so you can see exactly what's what. Let's get that off of there. That's better. You can see what I'm doing now. So 12 foot pounds. Where are we? Well, there's 10, so that's 15, 20. So it's just above the 10 foot pounds there. Okay. Let's start off with this edge. Turn the bolt, turn it until the needle sits on the 10, I think I'll do first. There, that's 10. Opposite corner. That's 10. Low 10 that one. And that one. And then we'll start on the inside ones as well. And we'll do it fairly evenly, don't we? Alright, that's about eight pound. I am gonna talk down the, the condenser one, but I can always redo it, can't I? That's about eight. And then diagonally across the other way. That's about eight. So I'm pre torquing it, and then I'll torque it in a second just down to what it should be. Because if you torque down, it's about eight or nine. If you torque down one, you've got all that pressure on that one corner, haven't you? So I like to pre torque. Leave, leave a couple of uh, foot pounds out less and then go around again and talk down properly. Okay, it's just me. Right, what we got there then? That's about 12 there. On a modern ratchet, on a modern torque wrench, you'll get a nice click. And you can't go past what you set it at but it all depends on how much you spent on your torque wrench how accurate it is as to what it's set at that's 12 that's why I like this old-fashioned one you can't go wrong with it it's right every single time isn't it that's 12 okay, we'll go diagonally across there That's 12 diagonally across from it. That's 12. That's 12. And 
that's 12. Right, that's torqued down quite nicely. Let's give it another spin. Lovely. That's better. Now, because we've brought that head down a few micromillimeters, I'm just going to loosen off that cam chain tensioner and then nip it back up in a minute. Let me just. Uh, need to undo that one. I'm not going to fanny around with that right now. I'll do that in a bit. I've nipped it up, so that's good enough. But I need to undo that lock nut. Uh, make sure it's pinched so it's not stopping the shaft going up and down, basically. Ooh, uh, missus. Sounds a bit rude. Awesome. That's fantastic. And you know what the beauty of this whole thing is? This engine has done 1,195 miles. That's it. This has got to be the lowest mileage Honda CD175 engine on the planet, hasn't it? Apart from someone that's just done a complete new build with you know, new everything on it. But isn't that fantastic? I can't wait to ride it. I really can't. It's going to be like a new engine, is it? It pretty much is, isn't it? Well, there we go. That is definitely it. That's it for now. Uh, yeah, I can get the frame out, I can get the swinging arm on the frame, I can get the engine in the frame, I can get the wheels on the frame and the forks, get it to a rolling chassis. Don't know if I'll do that today or not, that might be for tomorrow evening or another day or whatever, but it's getting there isn't it? This is the, the heart of the bike and it's pretty much there. Right guys, that is it, thank you for watching, uh, like, subscribe, comment, whatever you want to do. Just, I hope you're enjoying these videos. Right, thanks for watching. Right, let's damn it, let's do the valves, valve gaps. Uh, there is my uh, zero zero. Where are we? Zero zero two feeder gauge. I have undone these nuts and the square pegs. Remember, I put the camshaft when I put the camshaft in. I had to loosen them off. So we insert the feeder gauge between the valve and the adjuster base see that that's moving quite freely let's just turn that square peg around a little bit let's use me long nose pliers right, too tight and the feeder gauge doesn't move back it off until the feeder gauge slides in and out with a little bit of drag pinched off pinched off so that's where we want it there. 8 mil spanner. Just to nip that lock nut up. Just double check before we tighten it. That's absolutely beautiful. Now basically what we're doing here is setting the gap between the rocker and the top of the valve. It's a minute little gap. Uh, as the engine heats up, the metals heat up, that clearance will get taken up, hopefully. Uh, but the main reason is, as I've lapped the valves in, uh, they might need a little bit of bedding in, and that gap will, will change, so I'll have to recheck this these gaps. But basically, uh, if the gap's too big, if this thing's flopping around, that means that there's too much gap between the valve uh, top and the rocker arm which means as the valve, as the rocker arm pushes down on the valve, because there's so much gap there, it has to clear that gap first before it starts pushing the valve in, obviously. Uh, therefore, you'll get a tappity noise because of that hammer action. And also, when the rocker is completely depressed and pushing that valve in, because there's, there was that gap initially, the valve won't be opening far enough uh, on the exhaust to let... It, the, maximum amount of exhaust gases out of the engine and same on the intake if 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 uh if, well if if the gap's too tight excuse me shush if the gap's too tight it's uh you're going to get uh the valve isn't going to seat properly when the rocker arm is off the top of the valve it's going to be slightly open therefore you're not going to get the compression and you'll have power drop off on your engine right there we go that's pretty much it I've done the other three already. That was the last one to do. So I'm literally going to pop the cap on. It's a 19mm spanner. 
I fitted the four new seals that came in that gasket kit. So there we go, that's it, valves are all done. The engine is literally ready to run. I can get the stator cover back on with the gasket now and that's it well that's it that is definitely it now okay again thanks for watching i do appreciate it fellas um hope this has helped somebody out right next stage get the engine back in the frame